Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for mommy, <clears throat> Morgan Le Fay. Morgan Le Fay is a high damage, high range mage with relatively low cooldowns, as well as some of the most potent CC relative to her damage in the mage category. Build wise, Morgan can flex between a cooldown focused build and an all out damage build. Pre nerf, Morgan can flex into some defense just fine, but having any item that doesn't give her power feels very noticeable on Morgan. The best option if you need defense is going a Book of the Dead build, and with Warlocks making a bit of a resurgence, that's good too. Frogs wise, the good old Beads Aegis does the trick 100% of the time, and there's no real benefit to replacing Aegis with some other defensive relic. Morgan's abilities are relatively simple, but piecing them together in the correct way to complete the perfect mage combo puzzle can be a little tricky when you're first learning her. Let's start with Morgan's first ability. When Morgan activates this ability, she's able to choose one of three versions of this ability to cast. In every version, however, the ability deals damage in the same size AoE and with the same damage numbers. It fires in a small AoE first, then fires again in a larger AoE. This larger AoE's effects differing depending on what version of the ability you chose. The first version of this ability has AoE inflict a 1 second fear on all enemy gods hit. The second version of this ability creates a slow field that remains for 4 seconds, this time working on both minions and gods as well. And finally, the third version of this spawns a clone of Morgan that will basic attack the nearest enemy god, and similar to the first version will only gain its additional effect if the ability hits an enemy god. This is Morgan's combo starter, poke, and a bit of wave clear all wrapped into one ability. While her wave clear eventually gets relegated to other abilities as the match goes on, this is still an excellent harass tool during laning, allowing Morgan to easily ensnare the enemy laner as well as clip a group of archers or melee minions too. But which version of this ability is best? Well, the first version of this ability, the fear, has been the de facto version of this ability since Morgan first released. You really can't beat high damage, high range, hard CC that sets her up perfectly for a follow up. That said, after the recent diminishing return changes, using the fear as self peel only works if an enemy god hasn't been hit by any CC recently. And on that note, this fear with max diminishing returns on a target is pretty much non-existent. So if you know a target has a lot of DR on them, the slow in the second version of this ability is a much better setup for yourself and your team. As for the third version, uh, I have to be frank, I don't really know why it's here. It doesn't provide you any extra damage that Morgan wouldn't be doing thanks to the setup that either the fear or slow version would provide, so I'd just avoid using it other than in niche cases where you're tagging someone at max max distance and therefore are unable to follow up off of the slow or the fear. I've talked a lot about setup, so let's get to what you're setting up for. Morgan's second ability is quite simply one of the best abilities in all swing. Morgan knocks up and heavily damages all enemies in front of her, then fires a small medium damaging projectile that knocks aside all enemies. Again, like Morgan's first ability, this is a lot of things wrapped into one ability. In this case, this ability is insane burst, great self peel, and solid wave player too. That said, you want to keep this ability in your pocket most of the game, as it's easily one of the best self peel abilities in the game. Of course, how you use this ability as self peel differs depending on who's trying to dive on you, but a good self rule is never using this ability until the person diving on you has already used their main CC ability. As for how hard this ability bursts, well, it's one of the most damaging main abilities in the game if both parts of the ability hit. So if your jungler in the earlier mid game or your tanks in the later stages get CC on a target near you, it's absolutely advised to just walk straight up to them and smack the two in their face. In terms of using it as wave clear, well, as I mentioned, it is excellent wave clear, but you really only want to do this prior to backing, since you want to keep this ability in your pocket as often as possible, thanks to the self peel factor. Really, you use Morgan 2 in one of two ways, right in people's faces to obliterate their life bar, or right in people's faces to peel them off of yourself. Of course, using this ability aggressively is a bit risky, but it's where Morgan's third ability and ultimate comes to help her out. Morgan gains move speed and fires a projectile that passes through minions but stops on gods and walls, this projectile exploding when it hits either one. Any enemy gods hit by this ability will also have a damage over time applied to them, and Morgan can increase this damage over time by basic attacking enemies, which is why you'll often see a Morgan try their utmost to keep basic attacks up on any enemy she's hit with a full combo. Additionally, if any enemy god has its damage over time on them and uses any sort of movement ability such as a leap, dash, and so on, they'll be hit with an additional burst of damage. The second portion here with the burst damage is obviously a bit out of your control, and it's really not something you need to actively watch out for. They either use a movement ability and get heavily damaged, or they don't and you get to keep the damage over time on them with your basic attacks. Then you have this ability as your wave clear. This ability is typically max first on Morgan for this reason. She's able to easily hit the entire wave with this ability, while also granting herself move speed so she can either harass with her first ability in a good mid jungle matchup, or clear the wave in FO in a bad mid jungle matchup. So of course all this damage nonsense is great and all, but you should never forget that this ability is also Morgan's only form of movement, if you can even really call it that. This little bit of move speed on this ability is all Morgan has for directly escaping, and that said with her first and second ability CC she does have a lot of self peel, but it still pales in comparison 
comparison to having a proper dash or leap. So always remember, you get that move speed from casting this ability no matter if you hit any enemies or not. And spoiler alert, she can move while casting every single one of her abilities, so you want to cast as first in combos if possible. A bit of a class cannon then, huh? Well, she most certainly is, but her ultimate helps her greatly with survivability. Before we discuss that though, let's discuss her passive, which is directly tied to her ultimate. Ability hits on enemy gods grant Morgan a symbol on her passive bar, each version of her one counting her individual symbol, and each symbol granting her scaling magical power with levels, up to 10 magical power each at level 20. Once this passive bar is filled, Morgan will gain double the magical power for 10 seconds, but just as importantly, reduces the cooldown of her ultimate by a flat 10 seconds. And once the 10 seconds are up, the passive is reset. This passive typically plays a background role for Morgan, and since each version of her one counts from one symbol, she's able to just completely avoid using the less desirable second or third version of this ability to keep herself at 4 out of 5 symbols if she has her ultimate up. And of course, try to max her passive any chance she can to get her ultimate back up more quickly. Then, once it comes fight time, she can instead opt for the version of her first ability she hasn't used yet in order for full magical power. You preferably want to leave this as her second version of her first ability so she still has some CC. Then you just go all out with her main abilities until it comes time for you to use your ultimate. If you hadn't noticed, the same symbols that appear on Morgan's sword also appear above enemies' heads. The same max number of symbols, all given to the damage gods in the same way Morgan receives them upon dealing damage. But while the sword symbols stay unless you get max passive, the symbols on enemies only last for 30 seconds. But you can of course refresh the symbol's duration by hitting the enemy with the same ability again. These symbols on enemies do not have any effect outside of Morgan's ultimate, which is why I saved it for now. When Morgan casts her ultimate, she sucks up any and all symbols on enemy gods in a massive cone AoE, each symbol dealing a small amount of damage and the number of symbols absorbed resulting in a wider main projectile. Morgan is then able to fire out 3 strikes in a very, very long range in front of her, healing for a percentage of her missing health with every hit. Subsequent heals from the same hit, only healing for 50%. The damage from all of this, the symbols being absorbed, the 3 projectiles, it's completely devastating on its own. But teamed with all of Morgan's other abilities, it makes it nearly impossible to live through a full Morgan combo as a squishy. Plus, with the great health heal and 4 seconds of CC immunity, it makes Morgan a tricky one to catch. This, like her core abilities, doesn't exactly make Morgan an escape artist, but it does make her exceptional self-heal, and if she's peeling off a fellow squishy, she she's easily able to dish back all the damage they intended on doing on her with this ultimate. Again, a lot like her second ability, you use this ultimate in one of two ways. You either use it as a finisher in her combo, or you keep it in your pocket for some self peel. That said though, the range of this ability is seriously no joke, so don't be afraid to pop this for some artillery damage if the opportunity presents itself, whether that be someone trying to make an escape out of a fight, or a good engage that was just playing too far away from you. While it's great to get a bunch of symbols absorbed to make the ultimate easier to land, don't rely on seeing a bunch of symbols on your screen as the only good time to ult. Remember, it's only giving you a bit of extra damage and makes it easier to hit. So while it's nice to have, don't go missing a good opportunity to ult just because you didn't have a flurry of symbols to absorb. While Morgan's combos are fairly simple, here's an example of a couple. As for ability leveling, you want to get your 1 at level 1, your 3 at level 2, and your 2 at level 3. From there, you want to max your 3, your 1, then your 2, leveling the ult whenever you can. There's a bit of debate as to whether or not you want to max the 1 or the 3 first, but after the diminishing return changes, making the fear more of a worry, and then the time to kill changes on top of that, Morgan's 1 lost a lot of effectiveness as a poking combo tool, so her 3 being a safe clear option, as well as her only form of real escape, makes it the best choice overall. As for her second ability, well it does do crazy damage if you hit the full ability, but that only comes up so often, and if we're honest, usually on tanks who just laugh off most of Morgan's damage anyways, so may as well just keep it as CC until well into the game. Morgan Le Fay will probably go down as the most least complex mage ever. Her abilities have plenty of text, but realistically you only use them in one or two ways and the way in which you use them is usually pretty obvious. And while there are plenty of interactions with her abilities, you always kind of end up playing her like... So hopefully, having her abilities broken down simplifies her a bit for you, and you see that she's not nearly as complicated as the large text boxes on her abilities would lead you to believe. In terms of weaknesses, well, her early game isn't great, and there are some matches where you'll just never be able to get that full true combo on someone. And man, she is just not great into triple tank teams, especially tank junglers like Erlong. And unfortunately, if you haven't noticed already, she doesn't necessarily excel in any category. Her escape game is weak, her damage is strong but not the highest, and her CC is solid but not nearly up to par with some of the other CC based mages. Regardless though, what Morgan does have is consistency thanks to her range, as well as her low cooldowns. So while she might not have the damage or CC of some mages, she is still able to hit her abilities more often thanks to being able to keep herself at a distance while casting them, making her a great backup mage if your favorite mage meta is off the table, and a very fun one at that. That's all I have on Morgan Le Fay for now though. 
Thanks for watching.